Robert, can I ask you a question? Yeah. Who was Rudolf Steiner, and how did you come to discover him? Well, when I discovered Rudolf Steiner, I didn't know who he was. I was living at the Theosophical Society in Wheaton, Illinois. Mm -hmm. And in the past, I had been the president of the Young Theosophists of America, and then even the uh, Great Lakes Federation of Theosophy, I was the president, along with um, a leader of the Detroit Lodge. And I was living at the Theosophical Society in Wheaton, Illinois, and I discovered a secret library in the basement. They had to go through a secret panel on the wall. And I started to go down in this, this library that I didn't know existed every night to study the books that I found there that were underneath the library there. A secret library. And I discovered <clears throat> Eliphius Levi's Transcendental Magic, which was an intriguing idea that there was some kind of magic that is transcendental, that you could, I mean, I thought of Emerson and the transcendentalists of early America. The idea that we try to transcend the difficulties we're having, we get a bigger transcendental view, spiritual view, holistic view, oneness view, and then we come back in with that view to our day-to-day -day life. And uh, in discovering uh, th these books down in the library, I soon discovered Initiation and Its Results and The Way of Initiation by Rudolf Steiner, these two books that later became Knowledge of the Higher Worlds and Its Attainment. I also discovered Outline of Occult Science, which was Rudolf Steiner's interpretation, I think, of the secret doctrine by Blavatsky. I mean, after uh, Rudolf Steiner was the head of the esoteric section, esoteric school of theosophy in Europe. And his talks there are, of, 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 his talks on Blavatsky's esoteric school papers is uh, well given in The Foundations of Esotericism, a book I'm hoping to uh, publish this year. And so I discovered Rudolf Steiner in the basement of the Theosophical Society, and I read him for several years, thinking there was something there that I wasn't getting. And the older I get, the more I realize that there's something there that I'm not getting. And I'm hoping to dedicate the rest of my life to trying to figure out what the heck Rudolf Steiner is doing. And, and also, you know, where, where he came from, Blavatsky and the, the Hermetic... Uh, the Hermetic uh, philosophers, the fire philosophers, uh, of like Jacob Bohm and and uh, William Blake and Agrippa and and the Hermetics, and I mean, he comes out of a great tradition that goes way back into Neoplatonism and beyond, probably to the Wisdom Oracles of Atlantis, the Sun Oracles of Atlantis. Uh, it's Rudolf Steiner that said that the true wisdom of Atlantis was still alive in Tibetan Buddhism and the Native American Indian. Uh, the purest wisdom of Atlantis to survive. Uh, that, that's very interesting, that idea of wisdom and compassion. So who's Rudolf Steiner? Rudolf Steiner is kind of like a this wondrous guy that comes out of Goethe and Goethean gardening ideas, and he comes out of theosophy and many other wisdoms that come out of the land and the cosmos. And in this great tradition of theosophy, he goes further into Rosicrucian theosophy, that Christianity and spirituality and <clears throat> ancient India had to be transformed and metamorphosized into a more incarnational spirituality. Rudolf Steiner works from the top down, but after the burning of the Gertiana, this wondrous building that he built, a mystery school of the word, in Switzerland, this this double domed place called the Gertianum, and it burns. And after that, Rudolf Steiner works from the bottom up rather than the top down, and he works with biodynamic gardening, and Waldorf education with children, and new forms of medicine in hospitals. He's got a book on disease and karma. It's amazing. I mean, he's got tons of books on healing. And at the end of his life, he was trying to start a new mystery school of healing based on these spiritual, theosophical, Rosicrucian principles of anthroposophy. He called it anthroposophy, the wisdom of man, whereas theosophy was the wisdom of God or day. 
And <clears throat> the wisdom of man, you think of the word nam, N-A-M, man backwards. That's the word. So the wisdom of the word was a theosophical, anthroposophical idea of the wisdom of human beings. So at the end of his life, he's with Edith Wegman trying to start a mystery school, and it just goes on and on. And I, I don't want to say too much now. I'll say more in the future. But uh, Rudolf Steiner, um, his influence is vast in Waldorf schools and new forms of mystery school, not, a reawakening of the mystery schools where the, the whole world is the temple that we're in and every tree is one of the pillars. Every human being is a pillar of, of some kind of uprightness and uh, meeting of the macrocosm and the macrocosm, the great and the little. Each one of us is a, a little reflection of the whole of it and each one of us carries a spark of the wholeness that we can interpret every little thing. So I could never do justice to telling you who Rudolf Steiner is. But at the Mayflower Bookshop in Berkeley, Michigan, I'm a strong advocate of learning this new vocabulary of the spiritual soul, the consciousness soul, the spirit self. And that vocabulary can be learned by reading Rudolf Steiner books, reading Blavatsky's Key to Theosophy and Voice of the Silence, poking around in her collected writings, especially by M14, 12 perhaps, reading Osho, who the Dalai Lama says is totally enlightened, reading Manly Hall and the secret teachings of all ages, of all the metaphysical Tarot, astrology, gemstones, Egypt, American Indian, Native American, Christian, mystical Grail, Christianity, the Kabbalah, all based on Neoplatonism, those first 400 years AD, probably goes back to 350, 400 BC, time of Alexander the Great, and the mystery schools in Ephesus and the Eleusinian mysteries that go into the Greek, the Greek mysteries and the Neo, of the Neoplatonists, and then come through all this esotericism and alchemy of, uh, into modern day into metaphysical books stores like the Mayflower Bookshop. So I'm Robert Thibodeau of the Mayflower Bookshop. I'm a, a psychic intuitive astrologer here. I'm a spiritual scientist, researcher, and organic gardener, and I make music. I have a new song called Want to Get Lost. I mean, it'd be great. I could never get lost, you know, but I want to get lost in the spiritual knowledge and the, the divining the divinity of, of each and every soul I meet. So with that, I bid you do, and uh, may your heart be blessed, and may you discover uh, the vocabulary the word, the architectural vocabulary for the becomings of our spiritual soul. And I, and I hope to talk about meditation very soon. So you, it's very important to meditate and learn to hold still. It's very important for the mind to hold still while we're, while we're kind of witnessing our inner stillness and the whole of the world and its evolution. Uh, part of learning is learning to think this way. Part of meditation is learning to think this way and, develop a vocabulary for the articulation of the spiritual soul, virtuous deeds, love and truth, a vocabulary for that, a vocabulary of action and thinking and feeling, a vocabulary of universal truth and love. But a big part of spiritual development is learning to hold still while you're still aware. Then you'll still be here with me. And then we can fathom each other's the, we, we need to learn about the rest of each other and the rest of each other is in a stillness that is not yet spoken. So to that, may you listen to your own inner stillness that hasn't yet spoken. Bless your heart. Thank you, Mr. Mani Robert Thibodeau. Mani